All right, folks, welcome to our week three NCFA podcast. You know where you are. You know what it is. We're going to jump right into it. To this week, we are going to do a recap of week two, and we're also going to do a preview of week three. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, these are the week one players of the week. We didn't have them quite added yet to um, – the official canon, so we wanted to give them some props again. Uh, week one players of the week, we've got Neil Howard from Gordon State, had a huge week against a JUCO team, and also um, Casey Scroggins, two-way player, but really, really hit it on defense that week. This week, from, from, from week two, we've got our week two players of the week, so um, these, are, these are fairly fresh. Um, we've got uh, Daquan Banks, linebacker from Columbus State, had a huge week. Um, also a freshman, first year player, and offensive player of the week is, um, according to Ohio State, a quarterback 1B, uh, Spencer Moore. What do you got to say about these players, Dave? Yeah, I think, first of all, you know, having a backup quarterback come in for Ohio State, we, we all know all about Kelly Gerenstein and uh, Kellen Gerenstein and how great he is. He has been in the NCAA over the last few years. Uh, he's got a little injury. I think he's, he, he may be playing this weekend coming back. But Spencer Moore, who's been playing some tight end and some defense, steps in, throws for like 380 yards, set the Ohio State club football pass completion in the game, breaks their coach Grego's former record, uh, 24 completions, 380 yards. Like, where, where did this guy come from? You know, so that's pretty incredible. Right. And then, like you said, Daquan Banks over Columbus State, freshman, comes out playing linebacker, three sacks and an interception in a big time shutout victory for Columbus State to open their season. So pretty nice start to his college football career, I'd say. Impressive. And when you've got a you know legendary quarterback as a head coach of Ohio State, we should expect nothing less to have, you know, two solid quarterbacks on on the team. So always cool to see and yeah, great stats. And I I'm really liking the fact that people are sending us their pictures. We can give them good props. So let's keep that going too. Absolutely. All right, so week two recap. Now, if you remember last week, um, both Dave and myself, we picked who we thought was going to win each one of these games. And it it, it came down to a overall record tie, but we had a lot of the home teams coming up ahead again this week, that home field advantage coming through. Uh, Maryland Prep loses to George Mason. Uh, Pittsburgh uh, loses at Compton State. Uh, Sacred Heart gets a forfeit win over Vermont. Uh, Columbus State winning at home against South Carolina. Loyola Chicago squeaking one out at home against Ohio, uh, Miami, Ohio. And Ohio State's home game versus Michigan State. Ohio State won. So um, the, the, the one pick that we deferred was the, the blowout with Columbus State, uh, 57 to nothing. And then the one that I actually squeaked by to, to get the tie at 4-1 um, was the Loyola Chicago game. Yeah, I think we had a good round of, of football. A lot of teams open their, their season. Mason opens their season with a win versus prep school. And again, you you never know what the prep schools. Some of them are, are really good and, and some of them aren't, aren't as great. But so you can't put too much stock into that score. I mean, that could be a really, really solid prep school. And to get out there 58 could be a really nice win for them. Hopkins State, unknown. Uh, so we get 12 0 victory over Pittsburgh. I don't think we saw any film of that game. So the they're still relatively unknown because we have no film and no stats from it. So we just know cop and one. Uh, and then unfortunately Vermont had some issues with some, some illnesses and stuff and, and didn't allow Sacred Heart to open their season. So North Atlantic, I think we, we saw some stuff we expected to see and, and we are excited to see Coppin get a, get a victory there. And no offense to, to Pittsburgh, but Coppin has been a, a stalwart of the NCFA. So it's nice to see them come out with an opening season victory. Right, and uh, we, we finally see a, a super close game, like a one-point spread in Miami, Ohio versus Loyola. Like, these are these are barn burners that just come down to the wire. Yeah, and that's, you know, Loyola, we, we thought that, you know, maybe they didn't play their best game in week one, and we thought they'd come back and, and maybe put something together, and they obviously did. So that was nice to see them. And, and to see Miami, who's kind of rebuilding, you know, back to trying to be a powerhouse to come out and play, play a close game. And then we had a couple of games that got out of hand. You know, I know South Carolina had some travel issues in the Columbus, so I don't think they traveled their full squad. 
Uh, so that score may not be indicative of what they're going to do the rest of the season. Columbus State, you know, they, they have big high hopes for the year. You know, they had a really great game with their quarterback as well. Donald Wilson had a really nice game. He was the conference, South Atlantic Conference Offensive Player of the Week. So he had a nice game. And then Ohio State's just just rolling, man. I mean, they are they are a, a great football team at our level, and I think they're going to be a really tough team to beat. So uh, I thought Michigan State would have gave it to them a little bit better, but that that Ohio State offense, even with the, the second – second string quarterback is still just rocking and rolling. Right. And if, um, you know, Michigan state woke up on the wrong side of the bed and didn't play their best. And maybe, you know, a couple lucky things went to Ohio state that could easily make the the score get out of hand. So uh, we even heard after the game, like Michigan state's not to be underestimated. Like the score is not indicative of how tough and how talented that MSU team is. And we're probably going to see that um, on the next couple of slides when we cover the highlights. Yeah, definitely. And I think somebody's going to have to really, play their A game to beat Ohio State, but it's definitely something that can happen. So there's there's still some interesting matchups in that Great Lakes coming up when Ohio State takes on some of the other teams. So I'd like to cover some video highlights now. We've got we've got video highlights from from three teams. And um, we'll jump right into it. George Mason, this is our, our first glimpse of of George Mason this year. Yeah, and I saw a couple. They put some clips on Twitter, so I saw a couple couple clips. You know, this touchdown pass. We were trying to figure out who's going to take over for Chase Soper, so we got an answer, you know, there with that touchdown pass. And then they had the thing that Mason was talking about. You know, they were looking to see if we could get tracking for quarterback pressure because they their D line was just they only had a couple sacks, but they they were apparently in the backfield all game. And these highlights kind of kind of show that. So. Yeah, we're seeing athleticism all over the field with George Mason. They just look really impressive, the size, the speed. Um, yeah, they look like athletes. Even if you look at the sideline, even though that picture right there, like the guys that stand on the sideline, athletes, you know, we knew they have they have numbers. They'll be up to that 50-man roster point. So, you know, here's a long touchdown or long uh, fumble recovery type deal with a really great-looking athlete right there running down at the defensive lineman. So, I definitely think, you know, watching the film of Mason, they look like a team that should contend to be in the discussion for a national championship as they expect it to be. Yeah, and as we see this, um, we're keeping in mind, I think George Mason is playing Sacred Heart next week. So um, knowing yeah, what, and, what Sacred Heart has been in the past and seeing what this current team of George Mason can do, that, that, might be the, that might be the game of the week coming up. Yeah, I definitely that's probably the game of the week. It is when, when we did the split of the of the North Atlantic, it is going to be considered a non-conference game, but it could be a conference championship type preview thing. So, you know, we'll see what Pitt and Coppin end up doing, but George Mason looks pretty formidable. And I'm really interested to see Sacred Heart. You know, they're going to be a little bit upset yet again with a forfeit this last week. You know, they had all that issues with catching forfeits last year. So I think they're going to be ready to play. But Mason looks like they can give wow. anybody a run for their money. Yeah, there's some there's some tough nose football in these highlights. And you know, I want to point out too that um if you're a team that's if you're one of the people that schedules for your team, you can schedule out of conference games. So like I said, Sacred Heart's playing George Mason next week. That's not gonna hurt their conference standing. So um it's actually good practice to play teams outside of your outside of your conference because you know, winning your conference games and making it to that conference championship is one of the big um, one of the big goals of any team in the NCFA. But to go outside of your conference and play other teams is not going to hurt your conference standing. So you can still afford to perhaps lose those games. Yeah, and, you know it'll affect power rankings and whatnot if, if you lose. But if you get a big win against an out of conference mm -hmm. team, that only boosts your power ranking. You know, with the fourth playoff team coming from those power rankings are maybe a little more important than they have been the last few years with playoffs. They were more like being right, but you know, take walk out on that limb. And if Mason goes and beats Sacred Heart, that's a great win for them in the power. Rank. Yeah. Well, in games played is also accounted sure. for in the power rankings too. So the more games you play, the better. So that's all the more reason to schedule some out of conference games, you know, food, food for thought for future seasons on teams that aren't doing that yet. All right, let's jump over to Michigan State highlights against Ohio State. I'm going to go. Um, I think I can set this up. I've got some. I got some plays, some play descriptors here. Uh, we've got Jack Donovan to 
Colin Marshall touchdown on this play. Okay. And Jack Donovan, preseason, you know, all American watch list as a quarterback. So returning starter for them. I love that field at Ohio State, the club field in the shadow of, of, of the varsity field. It's a really nice place to play. Very cool. Uh, this next play coming up is a tackle for a loss. Uh, Jared McElroy and a gang of Spartans. Michigan State looks to be in a pretty aggressive defensive front here. So, you know, it's good to, to get a glimpse, you know, in years past, we have just haven't seen a lot of film floating around. So you get an idea of, you know, Michigan State, high-flying offense, but it looks like they have a very aggressive defense as well. Now setting up this next highlight, we've got Isaiah Kirby from the Spartans getting an INT. Nice return. Yeah, nice return. Nice bracket coverage there and made a, make a play on the ball. So, you know, like you said, sometimes games get out of hand quick, especially when you're playing a really good team like Ohio State. You know, things can pile on pretty quickly. Next thing you know, you're down two, three scores, and you're trying to figure out how to get back. So, you know, I still think Michigan State, the team to, to contend in the Great Lakes, and it, I wouldn't be surprised if they're the team that ends up you know, going to the conference championship game. There's not a split conference, so n number one and number two will play in the Great Lakes Conference championship game. And Michigan State can still run the table the rest of the rest of the way and maybe get another shot at Ohio State. Or right. whoever else is there. Ohio State could still falter a couple of times. We've got the last Michigan State highlight. We got Jack Donovan to Benji Agunloy. Probably butchered that last name, but we'll make up for it with the highlight. We got motion. Motion to trips, drop back pass. Yeah, you can see Jack Donovan Holds can sling down. the ball. So that's a heck of a catch right there. But Donovan put it right out there for him to make a play. You know, good throwing motion, good mechanics, nice little play for them. So I think you're seeing that, you know, Michigan State has some some pieces to to be a contender. Now we're gonna shift gears and, and look at the Ohio State center clips from that game and see what Spencer Moore did here. But uh, you know, Michigan State's not a bad football team, and, and you know, Ohio State's just re playing really, really good football right now. All right, play one is a Jackson Rittman strip sack. Sophomore linebacker Jackson Rittman gets the strip sack, which is returned 30 yards for a score by linebacker Eric Hooper. Even fooled the cameraman. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, and you look at a play like this, a play like that, where I think it was Ohio State got a little bit lucky there. I mean, they were in man coverage, cover one, and they both their slots got beat. So if they're able to get that ball off, that's probably a touchdown Michigan State. And it's just you get a player or two like this, you know, obviously Michigan State, you know, didn't have enough guys to protect because they're in man. So they're bringing, you know, they're bringing six, six man pressure. It doesn't look like Michigan State had a six man protection. So quarterback didn't know. Where's hot hot read or what that kind of stuff is? You know, we don't maybe don't get to that in the amount of practice time we have at this level, but unblocked guy comes off the edge and just just kills him in that first play. Yeah, and two guys waiting to waiting to eat too. So. Yeah, and you got you know you got both slots. You got the top slot just running by himself. That's touchdown city right there. Had a, right. had a linebacker on a, on a slot receiver, so. Again, that's some, that's something that Michigan State can clean up for for next game, and you know if they do end up facing Ohio State again, I think they'll see some stuff on film that they can come back and, and do better. Play number two of four, uh, Ohio State. We've got quarterback Spencer Moore to Abdu Kita. Spencer Moore connects with Abdu for a beautiful catch and throw up the sideline. Um, again, Ohio State's backup quarterback broke the school record for completions in a single game with 24 in this win. Yeah, and Keita had a big game in week one receiving to him and Scroggins both seem to be pretty pretty talented wide receivers. I mean there's there's nothing real crazy about this. I wouldn't even say it was a, a fantastic throw. They put it put it where it needed to be, but double coverage and receiver just goes and grabs the football. So you know it's 
sometimes things just go your way when you're playing really good and this guy goes out and makes a play. I wouldn't say coverage was bad. Yeah. Just a, you a got athlete versus throw. athlete there. Yeah. You even have a safety coming over too, but safety wasn't fast enough to really get over and be, be part of yeah. the play. Safety didn't, didn't take a great angle, but you know, you still had pretty good, pretty stinking good coverage by that corner and, and the throw was where it needed to be and receiver just wouldn't grab it. So, and it's nothing real tricky. Sometimes you wonder like how great Ohio state's offense is. And you know, they probably call the right play at the right time very often. Coach Greg and his staff do a good job of planning and understanding tendencies. But, you know, it's a real simple play. It's just a go route. And they've practiced it, a, you know, 100 times, and they're good at doing it. And that's kind of what happens. Doesn't and when you, got a- when you got athletes and it's, what is it, second and 10, it looks like, you know, that's when you can take yeah, a shot. Second, so. and yeah, and it doesn't always have to be super complicated. It's just putting your athlete in a position to make a play. All right, play number three. A Trey Jones sack. Freshman uh, defensive end Trey Jones collects one of his two and a half sacks on the day, sacking MSU quarterback Jack Donovan early in the third quarter. Let's have a look. Once again, here you got you got a man, you got man type of look. They come out to him, drop into a zone. So I think they confuse Michigan State up front a little bit. You know, previously they were in that man pressure look. This time they drop into a zone. Yeah, well, again, man on man, number seventy four, this right tackle for Michigan State. You got that that tackle turned sideways. As soon as, as soon as that tackle got turned sideways, that's when he got beat. Yeah, and then th- th- at this point, Michigan State has the advantage, so they drop seven in the coverage. You know, which leaves them four six man protection against four. You should you should be able to get the pass off, but you know, they had, good job to Ohio State for mixing it up between six and seven man pressures and then a four man pressure that looks pre-snap like it could be a six man pressure. So nice job by, by the defense. Right. That. And, you know, credit to the Michigan state line too. Like we're, we're snapping the ball here at two seconds and at the six second mark is when there's contact. So these linemen are still blocking Ohio state's defense for four seconds. You, you really can't ask for more than that. So, yeah. um, when you drop seven guys in coverage, it's hard to find a place to throw. So right. definitely understand why, where he was having trouble finding somebody. All right, and this is the last highlight of the week. Christian Special Allen team. blocked a punt. Nice. Um, sophomore Christian Allen blocks the Michigan State punt, one play after the Joneses sack. Allen also had an interception in the game to go along with five tackles. So great game by Christian. Yeah, I think Ohio State had a couple guys who had who had pretty outstanding days, and they, you know, some guys that could have been could have been in that discussion for national defensive player of the week. The the rule of thumb still is like if you block a kick or a punch, you have like a ninety percent chance. So winning that game. So it's one of those tight changing plays and guy just makes a play there. I don't think protection is bad. I think he just beats his man and gets there and blocks it. Gets to tackle the kicker for without a penalty because he blocked the kick first. Yeah, with with nobody coming right up the middle too, um, number 57 probably could have helped a little bit. You know, I'm not not criticizing anybody and of course when when football's live it's not going this fast but again it was a guy beating another guy he almost catches the punt like the punt gets right here two feet away he's got his hands up where he's blocking it it looks like he almost could have caught it started running and then he runs into the punter Tough play. It's great to see these highlights, though. I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy that teams are sending us highlights. It makes, it makes this a lot more fun, and we get to share it with the rest of the league, and you know, show people what college club football looks like. So, um, the the rankings for week two are have yet to be released. Um, I know. Well, today is Wednesday, and usually the the voters poll is due on Tuesday night, so that has not been officially released yet. So um, stay tuned for for that. 
I can say that um, the week two rankings, so it's week three, the, the rankings from last week are, are what we see here. Um, like we've been saying, Ohio State's up top and then Gordon State, Oakland at three, Sacred Heart at four. This is the top 10. So um, there's a lot of Great Lakes teams in here. And with only, you know, a couple weeks worth of games, it's really hard to kind of rank. So um, next week it's going to be probably a whole new ball game. So our NCFA week three previews, we're going to start out with what we've been teasing uh, throughout this entire episode here is we've got George Mason going on the road to play Sacred Heart University in a non-conference showdown. Dave, what are your thoughts on this game? You know, I, I think without a doubt, you know, there's some great games in, in a couple other conferences too. We get to get our first look at some teams, but this Mason at, at Sacred Heart really is is a game that has some ramifications from 2021 where Sacred Heart thought maybe they should have been the team in the national title game. Mason got the number two seed in the power ranking. So I think Sacred Heart's going to be upset about that. They're going to be upset about having to forfeit yet another game, get a forfeit victory in their op season opener last week. So you know, I, I think it's going to be a good game, but I expect Sacred Heart to come out pretty strong and try to set a statement that Ohio State's good, Mason's good, but don't forget about Sacred Heart, that former NCFA championship program right here, ready to, to make another run at it. Yeah, statement game, and like you said, this could have possibly have just as easily been the, the national championship of last year. So um, look for whatever team that comes out ahead on this game to uh, – to, to be the statement maker, you know, to come out and say, this is who we are and we're going to, we're going to compete this year. Um, again, there's no conference ramifications for this game. So I, I really applaud the scheduling of it. Uh, who do you got to, to win this game, Dave? So, so I'm going to take sacred heart in this matchup. I think, you know, like I said, I, I think I kind of laid out the reasons why, but I'm going to take the home team and, and sacred heart to get their, their first victory of on field 2022. All right, I'm going to just play devil's advocate, and I'm going to take George Mason. Okay. we got to get that. we got to be picking the same thing all the time. And this is going to be sure. a good game, too, so it could go either way. I don't know. Uh, let's go to the South Atlantic. We've got Southern Georgia Tech, new team against Columbus State. It's going to be a tough, tough road match for Southern Georgia Tech. Yeah, we got a little typo. Central Georgia Tech. Get a little typo Central? There, but Central, Central Georgia Tech. Now – I there apologize, are, I'm going to fix that right now. There are uh, some weather things going on, so we are we may have some issues of some reschedule of games in the South Atlantic. I know Central Georgia and Columbus may have to reschedule, and South Carolina and Longwood may have to reschedule. You know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'm really eager to see, you know, what Central Georgia Tech is all about, you know, their first year of the program. Um, so it's going to be a pretty interesting game. You know, I do think Columbus State came out and just massacred uh, prep school last week and really came out and looked great. So, you know, I'm definitely uh, thinking Columbus State's going to come away with a victory here, but I, I like to see if Central Georgia Tech can come out and, right. and let us know what kind of team they're going to be in the conference. Yep, I'm right there with you. I believe that Columbus State's going to come out ahead on this one, but um, we're going in blind. We don't know what Central Georgia Tech has got coming out of the gate either, so um, we're looking forward to see what the score is on that one. Next, we have uh, Gordon State versus Southern Shreveport. Now, Southern Shreveport's not an NCFA team. It's a non-conference uh, non conference game, and they've been putting up yeah, numbers. Little, so. Cool game. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, again, we don't know much about these prep school type places. So they're pretty prevalent in that South and East coast areas, but you know, Gordon state came out and, and just dominated in their first week. And I expect them to, to probably continue that. I think you know, much like Sacred Heart, Gordon state was a little bit upset about being on the outside looking in last year with no playoffs. So I definitely think Gordon state's going to come out and, and, you know, probably take this victory over this prep school. You know, it is a travel game, but I think they have a lot of talent on that team at Gordon State. Right. I'm not – I'm usually not one to bet against Gordon State, and I'm usually not one to uh, to bet against an NCFA team whenever they play a, a prep school or a JUCO. So I'm, I'm going with Gordon State as well. We've got South Carolina and uh, at Longwood. So I'm really not sure what to make of – 
of this game, and I'll I'll throw out a prediction. I'm just going to go with the home team on this one. I'm going to go with Longwood. Yeah, we we know really very little about Longwood. They have talent coming back. They didn't win a lot of games last year. South Carolina, like like I said, you know, I talked to their team president, and they had some major travel issues. I only brought about half their team to play Columbus State. So uh, again, this is one that could be affected by this hurricane that's coming in. But you know, I, I think South Carolina gets gets it together. And if they do play this week, and I like South Carolina, so I'm going to go with South Carolina uh, to take this victory over Long. All right. And then we go to the Great Lakes Conference. We've got Oakland uh, going to Miami, Ohio. Now, I think you know Oakland had, had a bye week after a really pretty convincing week one win. Miami played a close game against Loyola. I just think Oakland's probably at another level program wise than where Miami is right now. And, and even though it is a road trip, I, I think again. Yep. So we've got Dave picking OU. And uh, I'm picking OU as well. They've got momentum coming into this week. Uh, it's a road trip. I think this is one of maybe only two road games they have. So I'm looking for Oakland to come back with a W on that game. And uh, we've got Ohio State traveling to Loyola, Chicago. And uh, Loyola, Chicago, uh, we're going to have to see how Ohio State plays on the road going to, going to Illinois. Although my, my prediction is that OSU is going gonna, is gonna to win this game. Yeah, I think... Ohio State's going to have a little more adversity and a little more things to worry about with the road trip. It's going to be a hefty trip from Columbus over to Chicago, but I don't really think unless something drastic happens that, that Loyola comes out with a victory and it, no knock on Loyola, but Ohio State's just playing really, really good football right now. Uh, if Kellen Garenstein, you know, he's, he's a, a Chicago area native. So I think he's probably pretty excited back on the field. He can play probably with a lot of his family, probably still in that area, Chicago land area. So, I, I'm going to pick Ohio State. And now we've got uh, UW-Milwaukee against Michigan State. Now, this is a non-conference game as Milwaukee is a, uh, an independent uh, this year, so they're going to be uh, traveling to, to Michigan State to play a non-conference game. Now, Milwaukee was in the conference championship last fall, the Great Lakes Conference Championship. So um, this is going to be this is going to be a tough one. Uh, who, who do you got, Dave? Well, you know, I'll go first. I think after seeing some clips of Michigan State and seeing what kind of athletes they have, you know, I'm not going to hold it against them. The loss to Ohio State, I think, with them being the home team, you know, we don't know a lot about Milwaukee yet. You know, they had a pretty great year last year, made it to the conference championship game and lost to Oakland. But I think Michigan State, you know, kind of try is going to try to bounce back and let the rest of the NCFA know, hey, guess what? You know, we didn't play our greatest game. Things kind of snowballed and. We really are a team that can contend for a playoff berth, so I'm going to take Michigan State. All right, I I love Michigan State and their coaches, but I also know that Milwaukee's got a tough defense, so I'm going to go on a whim and just to just to divide the win loss column a little bit better, Dave. I'm going to go with Milwaukee on this one. So as a Wisconsin right, native, you, that's where I can I can put my eggs in you that got basket. Your, Mac, for this your, game. your love for Max Brown uh, right. is going to cloud your judgment. Right. Yeah. If he's coming back, he's going to cause some problems for, for Michigan State. So we'll see what happens. Coach Beach is going to light me up for this too, but I hope that's just some, some fodder for his team to, to step it up against Milwaukee. We'll see what happens. And then last we have Wright State at Toledo. So this is a uh, in two Ohio teams battling it out two you know, mid to upper tier teams in the NCFA. These guys are always, you know, kind of they Toledo had a great first season last year. Um, they're they've got some some playmakers. They they've got flashes of, of greatness kind of in each one of their games. They're looking to make that next step. Wright State uh, being in one of the uh, the conference championships, I believe, last year. So both of these teams looking to make a big statement. I'm going to go with Toledo on this one. Yeah, I, I am not purposely trying to 
copy your pick, but I just think Toledo's the pick here at home. You know, they're a nice, great big stadium. They get to play in the varsity stadium. Uh, so that, you know, that's a big thing. And I'm going to take a lot of credence into what uh, Coach Greg has said after they played him in week one, that he really felt Toledo was a very, very good team. You know, no, no knocking on Wright State, but I, I do think that Toledo's going to come out and play pretty good football. And I think they're going to get the W here in their second game of the season. All right, so there you have it. Those are our week three uh, previews and our week three picks. We'll see you next week at what happens. Again, join us next week as we cover uh, week four. And if you guys have any video highlights, please pass them over to us. Um, if you'd like to be maybe a guest on our show in a future week, let us know. And again, those those players of the week, make sure when you get those nominations in that you can send a picture. That always helps. We can We can make you guys look cool. So... Um, we had a blast this week and we hope to see you again next week. Take care.